What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today, this is the first time I've started doing a face cam video. I don't know, I made a poll and it says you guys want to do a face cam, so this is the first time I'm going to do a face cam. Today, we're going to do uh, DigiQueries. So essentially is that you're given an infinite string that consists of all positive integers in increasing order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, <laughs> whoops, I gotta get my mouse. In, the, in this, you see one, then there's two, then there's three, then there's four, then there's five, then there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it repeats. So it goes 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So it continues repeating. So our task is that basically we need to query digits at this form. So what is a digit at the kth position in the string? So if I give you, I don't know, the first position, it will return one, right? And if I give you the ninth position, it'll return nine. Right. And if I give you the, the 10th, it should give one. 11, it should give zero. 12, it should give one and so on and so forth. Essentially, is that's what we have to do. And the input of this statement is that we basically read in the Q, which is the, the number of queries. And then we read in each integer K, which is the starting index one of each of the, the string. So that's basically the gist of the problem. And now we have to figure out how to solve this problem. So let's go right in. So the most naive way you could do this is actually just to repeatedly build your string. So we start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we just do 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 24, 25. And we just keep going on and so forth. 26, 27, 28, 29. 30 and we just keep going until we could get up to I don't know 10 to the 18th which if you could do this but I don't think it will you'll probably overflow because there's only a certain amount of digits you could store in a string or an integer so if you just keep I mean you technically could just keep doing this and so on and so forth and then hopefully until you get 10 to the 18th and then just pick pick a position k and then just read read in whichever position at the kth position. But this takes a lot of time and it's not a good way to do this. So how do you do this? What you do is you have to build a mathematical equation representing each of the corresponding digits with its the pattern that you see. So the first thing that you can notice is that if the current value of your digit of your k is less than 10, right? If it's less than 10, you could just return the digit, right? Because if you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Any of the values here, are just going to be itself, right? Because like if the first position will just be the first position, second position will just be the second position, so on and so forth. It only happens when we reach the tenth position, in which case we have to start doing stuff afterwards. So if your k is less than uh, ten, we could just uh, just return k. That's all you have to do: just print out k and return it. And it only gets harder when we go past this. The first thing you need to know is that let's say that we're if we're given the our value of k, we need to know what is our length of the number that we're on that we're repeating, right? If, if I give you the k, so let's say I give you the thousandth position, what is the length of the number that is actually repeating? If it's if it's a thousand, and then it's actually, I don't know, it's 300, that's repeating over and over 301, 302, 303, 304. That actually matters. And the reason why is because if we look at this, we look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And then we look at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Once we reach 100, 100, the positions that we are at, if we just write a single math equation dictating, hey, what is the thousandth position, right? What happens is that once we reach longer length of our current number that we're repeating on, repeating two digit numbers of 10, so on and so forth, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then three digit numbers, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, is that these, because the length is changing of the number, that we're incrementing and repeating, that is going to affect what our, what our current positions are. That's gonna affect the current position and the math equation that, that we need. What we need to know is that, hey, if I'm giving you the current position k, what is the number, what is the length of the number that we're repeating on? Because if we know that, then it's much easier to you know dictate, these are the numbers that are gonna repeat, so on and so forth, and then we could figure out our equation from there. Because it's changing every time the length of the number that is repeating, every time the length of the number is repeating, changes from 10 to 100, and now it's, because it's three digits now, you know, length of three digits that we're repeating, 101, 102, 101, 102, 103, 104, and then once it gets like four digits, like a thousand, that changes again. What we need to know is given our position k, what is the length of the number that's repeating? And then that will help us find our answer. So we actually can calculate this. It's actually not that difficult. So we know that if our position of our kth position is less than 10, so we just return k, right? It's one, two, three, five, six, seven, nine. 
Now, now we reach two digit numbers. So it's repeating 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So what is the last value that are two digit numbers? It's simple, 99, right? So the next two digit numbers go from 10 to 99. So now we just need to know what is the last position if we're repeating this many number of times. Well, this is not actually difficult to do, okay? We can actually calculate this. So what is the last position of the number of 99? What do you do is you take 99 minus 10, we minus 10, and we plus one. So that's gonna give us 90. And this is gonna be 90 numbers. There are 90 numbers between 10 to 99, to 10 to 99, so there's 90 numbers. And these are 90 numbers that are two, two digits. Okay, these are 90 numbers that are two digits. So these 90 numbers have two digits. So we're gonna actually take 90 and we're gonna multiply it by two, and it's gonna give us 180. What is 180? This is gonna represent, similar to the last position, that we are going to repeat for two digit numbers. Okay, so if we're given the K position, um, there, there's going to be the position 10 is going to start from one and then 99 is going to end at um, position 180. I believe it would be 180. Now the problem is that this is assuming that this 10 that we started from actually started from index zero. But since we are starting from nine, we actually have to take 180 and we plus the first nine values that we're starting from. So it's going to be 180 plus nine. So our range for two digit numbers for the position would start from 10, right? So it would be this, this position would be the 10th position, right? All right, this is going to be the 10th position. So there's a 10, then 11, 12, so, so on and so forth. And then it's going to go up to 189. So this is going to represent the, the range of the positions that's going to be at. So we know it's like two digit numbers and so on and so forth. So if our K is like, I don't know, 170, so if our k is at position 170, we know that there are two digit numbers here. So let's say our k is equal to 170 now. So I want you to find me the number at the position 170. So because we already calculate the ranges, the two digit numbers, we know that for the ranges of the two digit numbers of their positions, we know because 170 lies between 10 and 189, we know this number, whichever number this is, this number is going to be a two digit number because we calculated this range that for all the two digit numbers, this is like the range of their positions. So we know the number is gonna be between 10. So this is our number, our number value of N. Let's say, let's call our number N. We know N is gonna be between 10 and 99 just from knowing this value of our current position of K and knowing it's in this range between 10 and 189. All right guys, so now let's actually look at the positions of our current number and see how they got their positions. So let's look at our number 13, this number 13. So what is the position of the starting value of 13? So where, where does this one start? Well, let's count. So we know that nine, it ends at nine, right? So the, this first value is 10, right? So it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so the starting value of 13 is at position 16. So this starting value 13 is at position, the position of 13 is 16. So how do they get 16 at position 16? Well, if you think about it, 13 minus the starting value of 10, 13 minus 10 is equal to three, right? Equal to three. And because there's every two digits they're skipping every two digits, right? So because there's every two digits here, every two digits here, right? So 10, 11, 12, these are every two digits. Three times two is equal to six, right? So three times two is equal to six. And if we take this value six, we add it to the starting value of 10. So we have this starting value of 10, 10 plus six, is equal to 16. So that's how they got, that's basically how they got this value of this 13 to be at 16, at position 16, right? They took the number here that they're at, subtracted from the starting position, multiply it by the number of digits, in this case it's two, and then add it to the starting digits, starting position, so they got the number 16 at the position of one at 16. So what we could do is that because we have this uh, lower bound of 10 and we have this upper bound of 99 in our number and we have this value of K, this position, we could 
what we could do is we could use binary search. Okay, so 10, and we know our numbers between 10 and 99. So what we could do is we could just guess like the middle. So we take uh, 99 minus 10, right? And then we get the middle, right? So we get our, our midpoint. And then what we do is what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this midpoint and subtract it from 10, okay? So we take this midpoint and we subtract it by 10. So we're gonna take this mid and subtract it by 10, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply it by the number of digits. So because we know this, because, because we know that our number has two digits, right? Because of this range between 10 and 189, we take mid minus 10 multiply it by two. And then we're gonna get a, another number. This is gonna be our position, right? We just have to check this position with K. And if it's greater, um, we move our, our, our left bound up to the top. And if it's less, then we're just gonna move the right, the right range of 99 down. And because of this, we will, we will be able to get our solution of our answer by using binary search on the digits. So yeah. All right, guys, so before I go over the code, let's just go back to what we had before. So remember 10 to 99, these are the two digits, right? The numbers of two digit numbers. And remember we said 99 minus 10 plus one would give us 90. And remember we said for three digit numbers, we have 100 to 999. And then we said 999 minus 100 plus one would give us 900, right? As you can see here, you don't actually have to calculate 99 minus 10 plus one. Um, to get 90, you could just subtract powers of 10. So we do 100 minus 10 would give us 90. So this is just like a faster way to do it when we want to code this up. To do that in a faster way, that's what I did. Uh, I just actually put powers of 10. So I actually calculated powers of 10. So here we have an array of vector of powers of 10. And I have not 19 of them. And I set all of them to have one, right? I set them all to have one. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to loop through and I'm just going to create powers of 10. So I'm going to take the previous number and multiply by 10. So that's going to create like 1, 10, then 100, 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000, so on and so forth. And this will help us calculate these numbers for the number of the range between the two digits and the position. All right, so I read in T, which represents the number of test cases. And then I do while T minus minus, keep decrementing the test cases each time. And here's what I do is I read in the number N, and this is going to represent our K, right? Um, I should have named it K, but it should be like the index that what we're trying to search for. I have this variable called num digits, which is what we need to find. So remember, we have to calculate number of digits, find out the number of digits for the number given the index, right? Remember, that's what we said. So I need to have this variable for that. I have this variable called digits, which just represents the current digits that we're adding so far. And then I have a previous digit that represents the previous digits that were added. And I use that later. So here I'm going to loop through from 1 to 19, which is representing the reason why it's 19 is because there's 10 to the 18th. This is the maximum number you could have for your k. And that's the main, also another reason why the powers is 19. Starting from index 0, we have 1, and then we go up to up to 18, which is going to be 10 to the 18, right, in our powers. Just like what we said before here, digits, the number of digits is going to equal to what we said before here, 100 minus 10, which will give us 90. Because every time it's going to give be 90, 900, 9,000, so on and so forth. This is an easier way to do it. So the powers, we're going to subtract the previous powers, current digits, and I'm going to multiply by i. The reason why is because i represents the number of digits, okay? So remember we had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So the, remember this, is that what we had before? Remember, we start first digits is 1, then it goes to 2, right? We're repeating two digits here, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Then it goes to three digits, it's four digits, five digits, right? So this that's what this I represents, right? We're multiplying by the number of digits every time that we're looping through. And then here we're, is this number of digits we're, is actually the length. I'll, I'll rename this like length. Yeah, digit length, okay? So this, that's what this represents. It's just like the digit length that we're incrementing. Then if the digit length is greater than or equal to our index N, the number of digits that we have will equal to I. Right, because that's the number of digits that we're repeating. Because we're doing one, then two, then three, then four, then five. Remember, we're trying to find the length that it's repeating, and that represents i. So our number digit variable is going to equal to i, because that's what it represents. And this uh, digit length, yeah, if our digit length is greater than or equal to the index, um, I'm going to rename it. Because it's kind of hard to understand this, but yeah, if it's equal to greater than or equal to k, then we, our number digit is going to equal to i, and then we break. It means that we found the digit length that's repeating. Then I have this previous digits, which is going to equal to 
I keep track of the previous um, length. Um, now we now we, since we have our number di number of digits that are repeating, um, we could just create use binary search now. So we have low is going to equal to num digits minus one, power of that. So like let's say it was, let's say we're repeating one hundred. So right right here, okay. So this would represent what it represents is if our number of digits was like three. Powers of two, powers of three minus one would be two. Power of 10, 10 to the two would be equal to 100. High would equal to powers of three. Three powers of three would be 1,000 minus one, which would be 999. So what low and high represents here, it will be representing, if it was three digits, this is what our low would be, and this is what our high would be. If we're repeating every three digits, that would be our low, and then this would be our high. Then while low is less than or equal to high, um, here I have the answer position and I also have starting answer position because I need the starting position also. Where low is less than or equal to high, we're going to get the midpoint. We're going to calculate the starting position. So to do that, what we're doing is we're going to take our midpoint, which is the one that we're trying to search for, trying to check. Midpoint is going to subtract by number of digits minus one, which is going to represent 100 in this case. Our range, and we're going to multiply by the number of digits, which would be three. Right, there's three of these. And then plus previous digits. So previous digits would represent all the previous digits beforehand. So all these beforehand, this would be like your previous digit, previous number of digits, right? Previous number of digits. I'm going to, I'm going to name this previous number of digits. Previous number of digits is going to equal to the current digit line. Previous number of digits would equal to all the values beforehand because we need that later on. Midpoint minus the powers minus one, which will be our range of our upper range. So I take midpoint minus upper range. I need to check if it's right. Uh, I multiply the number of digits because we need to, that's the number of times we're repeating, three, uh, length three. And then I plus previous number of digits, which, which will represent, represent the position that we're repeating at. And since we're repeating it, we're stopping at this last position. So like, assume, assume these, guys, these guys are like in the same line, but we're, we're, when we stop at the last position, yeah, we need to get our position. So that's what previous number dig digit does, is that we're adding by all the position of the previous digits. Well, I'll rename it again. Previous number position, and then we need to add one because it goes to the next position, right, that we're searching through. So yeah, this is that'll be our starting position. If it's less than or equal to K, the index that we want, the position that we want, okay. If it's less than or equal to that, we need to check if mid is greater than our answer, which is gonna be, and then we set our answer to equal to mid, and then our starting position, we're gonna to equal to start position. So if it's less than or equal to K, I said low, we're gonna increase the range. So this range of 100 is gonna to change to the midpoint, which would be 500-ish. So this, this low of 100, we know it can't be in this range of 100. So we're gonna to go to 501 to 900. Otherwise, I take high is gonna equal to mid. So then while this is done, while our binary search is done, searching through all the values for from 100 to 999. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna convert the answer to two string. So we have our final answer of our number that we keep kept checking over and over again, convert it to a two string, and this will be our number. And then if we want the current position, so let's say I want this digit, this 13, at the 17th position. Right, this three so i want the so let's say k is equal to 17. so since i already know the starting position is 16 all i have to do is which would be one here this starting position which would be 16 and i take 17 minus 16 which will get me to one and then i just print out the position of one of my number that i found so yeah i just print that out and that'll be the uh that'll be the digit number that will be at that position Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'm pretty tired. Yeah, peace.